Ladies and gentlemen, gamers of all ages, welcome to this, the fourth video for the 7th Continent Kickstarter project. I am, as always, Jamie, your community manager, and here today we're going to talk some more about some pressing questions, some different things that have come up on the forums, on the comments section, that sort of thing. Now, myself and the whole Serious Pulp team were at Essen, if you've been following the last couple of videos. Uh, the last weekend, it was very, 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 very busy. We're all very, very, very tired, but we're getting back on track. Um, the stand was packed out all weekend. I don't think there was any downtime with the demos, so Bruno and Ludo are thoroughly knackered after that one. Uh, I believe they got back last night, so some of you should have been receiving replies to your personal messages by now. Once again, sorry for the delay, but normally we're back to your regularly scheduled service now. Uh, I am, of course, back on the comment section and everything, so normally we should be back to normal. Um, what can I say about the campaign? Well, things have been going well since we were away. Um, there's always a lull in the middle of a Kickstarter campaign that's only to be expected, especially seeing as we weren't here, more or less, to animate the, the campaign, so to speak. So we're bringing in a small amount, not as much as we were before, but hopefully all the people that we managed to reach out and touch during Essen, Essen, uh, Essen sorry, <laughs> should hopefully boost things back up again. Plus we have some nice surprises planned for you guys in the next couple of days. Um, so that's about it really. We're standing at just over 630,000 if I'm not mistaken, which is still brilliant, which is still amazing. We're still on track for what we hoped to do with this campaign, so no worries there. Um, questions, more pressing questions. The print and play, now a lot of you are really eager to get your hands on the print and play. We did say that we would come back this week and give you some more info on it. Now I've talked with Ludo and Bruno last night about the whole thing. They talked about it a lot on the way back from Essen. Now what we've decided to do is because, um, because we technically will be giving out part of the game, the beginning of the game, and is, that is of course subject to change, we don't want to surprise anybody when the actual game comes out, what we've decided to do is do a small, a small print and play where we're going to go from something like 100 cards down to 40, no, something like 150 cards rather, down to 40, which should be, oh, perhaps 10 pages or so to print out, which won't be as bad for a lot of people. Um, it won't, this part of the game won't be included in the actual 7th Continent scenario, so it won't spoil anything from the base game for you, it will be relatively short and sweet, but it will run you through all of the mechanics that we've detailed over the course of the campaign. Sorry, the table is falling apart. Um, it is new, so it shouldn't be doing that, but I'll look at it after. Um, so there you go, print and play, that's all I can tell you about it from the moment. I will give you the information as I get told it by Ludo and Bruno, but... Hopefully we should see something by the end of this week, beginning of next week, so do bear with us. Um, now one of the hot topics that I didn't have time to address before Essen was the save system. A lot of people were talking about, well, if you save the game, you have to pack up all the terrain cards, and then when you play it again, you only use the terrain cards you saved on, you have to rediscover everything else, which means that you get more random event cards, which can be good, which can be bad. So a lot of people were saying, well, What's the point of this save system? Why don't we just have a save system where you leave all the cards out or it remembers all the cards or something like that? Um, and for the, fact, the fact of the matter is that that was never the intent of the game, that we always wanted people to have to rest their characters and then try and remember slash find their way back if they ever needed to backtrack. What's one of the add-ons was the cartographer notebook, which we'll get to later, but that's the point of one of those. Um, and secondly, it's not really part of the mechanic. Saving frequently or not saving frequently is fairly balanced depending on what you, where you are in the game, so to speak. There's a lot of mechanics, such as the recent um, Beanstalk add-on, uh, sorry, Stretch Go rather, where you do actually have to save the game and come back to it. Now that's a very simple uh, example, so to speak. You wouldn't need to do that multiple times, so why would you need to save the game multiple times? Well, there are different elements that do come back into play between save games. The most obvious one, the most game-changing one even, is hunting. Normally when you go and hunt an area, you do the relevant action, you draw the relevant cards, you hunt the relevant animals slash monsters, depending on what you come across, and then you replace that hunt card with another card, generally with a gold one. But you don't ban out the original card. The gold one will normally allow you to hunt, but with reduced effects, whereas the, the green one gives you much better chances to actually find something useful. Now, you don't actually ban out this green card when you hunt with it. You only just discard it and it goes back into the game box. So when you save the game again and come back to a hunting area, there will be animals back. 
Um, they won't always be the same animals. Some animals are unique encounters that get banished afterwards, that sort of thing. But for finding the basics, basic things to survive with, that's what you need. Um, so if you do save a lot, then you get a lot more opportunities to hunt. If you don't, then you don't come across so many random adventurers. Bear in mind that the game has been tested by two guys with kids, so they know what it is to have restricted gaming time. Um, four short 15 minute sessions to one hour, two hour sessions. And we think we've gotten something that really balances out both. If you're looking to do short gaming sessions, sessions of 30 minutes to an hour, it's good. If you want to do one to two hours, it's good. You will eventually need to save the game at some point though, or you might be having a slightly difficult time and taking up a lot of table space. There you go. Uh, so, I talked about add-ons earlier. Now, we do have a rather special add-on, which I think a lot of you will like coming very, very soon, if not tonight. So do look out for that one, especially for those of you which are particularly hungry for a stretch goal. You'll see what I mean. Now, the last one we added on was a cartogra cartographer's notebook. Pronunciation's bad today. Um, what does it do and why should you get it? Well, first of all, bear in mind, you do not have to purchase this. It is a purely optional add-on. It's more of a gaming aid than anything. And if you want, there is a downloadable file for free that is available, which I will probably put into the, the update with this video on, where you can download the actual file and just print it out yourself. You don't actually have to pay us any money. What is it for though? Well, basically, like I said, we do encourage you to save the game. The game itself encourages you to save the game. Now, for when you've been playing for an hour or two, you might be able to remember where that hunting ground is or where that wood resource or the the, the vine resource was, you, you might be able to more or less find your way back. Seven or eight hours into the game, however, slightly more difficult. And especially if you come across something that's related to a curse, especially one of yours, which you might have to come back to later, it can be quite useful to remember where. So the cartographer's book is there just for that. There's a big square where you can well, you can do whatever you want. You can write in it to write down what resources are available. You can draw in it. You can do whatever you want. There's a small box in the corner which allows you to write the movement cost for that area into it. And at the bottom, there's a couple of lines. If you ever need to add on any notes, you just put a little one or A or whatever in the box and then draw the same one, write the same one at the bottom with the notes. That's more or less how it works. Is it going to be useful to you? It's there because we think it's useful. If you think it's useful, it's there for you. Whether you want to pay for it or download it for free, go ahead and do so. If you don't want to, that's all there is to it, really. Um, now, still on this subject of add-ons, how do you add add-ons to your pledge? Because some people have been asking the question. It's very simple. If you've already pledged for the game, you go to the top right-hand corner of the screen. I'm well aware that if you're looking at this video, I've been pointing left, but trust me, I've been pointing right from my side. You go to the top right hand corner of the Kickstarter page and there will normally be a manage your pledge button. You click on that and then it will bring up at the top a small type box with the amount you've pledged in and the pledge options underneath. You don't need to change the pledge options. You just add the cost of the add-on you want to purchase to the cost already in the box. So say you've already pledged for the $89 pledge and you wanted to purchase a $6 add-on, you add six to 89 and then just put 95 into the box there you go, as simple as. Um, I think we've more or less covered everything that I wanted to cover. Uh, once again, thank you for bearing with us during Essen. It was uh, quite the adventure for us. I think it will do a lot of good for the campaign. I do realize that meant we were a lot less frequent presence rather on the campaign. So thank you for bearing with us. We will be back to usual from now on, <laughs> at least once Bruno and Ludo have recovered, slept a little bit, we will be. Um, but we're coming into the final two weeks of the campaign so hopefully we can speed things up with some interesting developments and we will see where things go from there once again as always thank you to all of you for your support we couldn't do it without you and i will see you for the next community update video ciao